I want to welcome Janusz Mahalik, former USA national team player and, and correspondent uh, commentator for ESPN and Sirius XM FC to ADSN. We appreciate your taking time to speak with us, Janusz. Oh, it's my pleasure. Happy to do it. Thank you. Charlotte FC, by the time this airs, will either have won, lost, or drawn in their inaugural game with, with DC United and stuff. We don't know what that'll be, uh, but they'll be back next week to uh, open up against the LA Galaxy here in Charlotte, where mm -hmm. we're hoping to have 75,000 fans in the stadium setting a new record mm -hmm. in Atlanta here. And one of our, our, well, our primary reason for wanting to talk to you is you were born in Poland, then grew up here and had a, a long career here in, you know, playing indoor and outdoor in American soccer. So, and you also keep a, a strong eye on what's happening with the Polish national team and players there. So I wanted to speak to you about the players there. Um, one of the players who's uh, one of Charlotte's first DPs is uh, Karel Swiderski. He's also been a witness to what's some of the fallout, what's happening in the Ukraine. And that was a subject that Charlotte FC coach Miguel Angel Ramirez spoke to in his press conference to the media. Uh, before your question, uh Voy a hablar en español. Eh, solo antes de I'm responder. Speaking in Spanish, a... so I can express myself better and be perfectly understood. It's an absolute sadness what we're living right now in the world. We, the ones that have the possibility to hold a microphone with cameras in front of us and have a voice in the world, I think we have the responsibility to scream that we don't want more disunity. I believe that any war in this world is a nonsense and innocent victims unfortunately will pay for it. Carol sent me a video with his fellow Polish people trying to escape in their cars. Carol sent me a video with his fellow Polish people trying to escape in their cars. We're deeply saddened by the situation. We want this nonsense to stop because we are here to be united, not to be divided and full of hate. And it looks like we haven't learned anything after all the disgraces that we as humans have made. I have nobody to give I have nobody to be giving lessons, but I feel the need to transmit my deepest sadness and my absolute disagreement with injustice and war. We want to be in peace and live in a society with freedom. I obviously, you know, uh, see some of the, you know, not just on American television, but but, but obviously I, I see some images from from there, from the, you know, Polish accounts or Ukrainian accounts, which are sometimes a little bit different, right? Or they don't get here as fast as anything. Uh, I think the the media here probably wants to verify some of it. Although, you know, if you know who you follow and trust, uh, you, you know that eventually makes its way here. Uh, but yeah, the situation is not great. Of course, uh, Ukraine are our neighbors, so is Russia, right? Uh, I mean, I. I worked for Polish television as well. I did Carl's all the games and qualifying, um, you know, to the World Cup. Obviously, that that is a big issue uh, too. Uh, you know, the Champions League final got moved, but of course, there's a big uh, playoffs qualifiers coming up in March, and Poland is playing or was supposed to play Russia in Moscow. As we know, UEFA had made a decision right now to play in neutral ground. Of course, FIFA has to stamp that uh, too, because this is a F FIFA competition, even though obviously both countries uh, belong uh, to UEFA as, as well. So we'll see what happens. I mean, there's a, you know, Carl probably doesn't really know right now because I mean, there's some pressures of, uh, I know from the Federation, from people, from fans, from media to just say, we will not play Russia. And as you can imagine, uh, a decision like that makes all kinds of sense and you know i'm fully behind it of course but you know i mean it's a walk you know world cup qualifier right you win that and you go to the final qualifier against the winner of sweden and the czech republic who are also protesting this as well so there's a lot going on now getting a player like swiderski to the to the mls when he was playing before in greece uh i know that um zoran Kernetta was uh talking about now, when he was talking to Paolo Sousa, who was the former Polish national team coach, Sousa was quite surprised that a player like Swiderski 
would consider coming to the U.S. and even more surprised to find out that the deal was already done at the time Zoran was telling him this. How he plays in the front line with Robert Lewandowski, who is one of the great strikers of all time with that. How big a deal is it for Carol Swiderski to be playing in MLS? Well, I think it is, but I think we've seen Polish players and, and you know, Przemek Frankowski that played for Chicago, I, I think proved that you can play here and, and then still make a pretty significant move, right? He, uh, he went to France and, uh, and Lille and, you know, it was actually first few games. He was incredibly good. He's been struggling a little bit uh, uh, lately, but I think, you know, uh, seeing that the managers are open to that and I think there's a different look on them uh, in terms of MLS. So uh, I, I am not surprised. I mean, Carl has been a big, big and nice surprise for the Polish national team because uh, let's face it, it's Robert Lewandowski. Adam Buxa was probably, you know, was probably ahead of him in the pecking order. I mean, mm -hmm. he came on the scene incredibly well score I, I can't remember I was there in Poland doing those games but score I don't know four goals in three games or something like that uh, Carol was doing a great job off the bench but also as a starter as well I think uh, both Adam Buxa obviously have proven uh, at, you know in New England that you can play in, in 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 United States and still feature and score goals for Poland in the qualifiers and so so has Carol so I don't think there's a Massive surprise. These two players actually took advantage of uh, some injuries. Arek Milik, of course, a very, very important player for Poland who plays for Olympic Marseille and had uh, two knee surgeries uh, in, in one season, basically. He's back now and scoring. So I think, you know, Karol and Adam uh, are looking over, probably, you know, happy for him. And same with Krzysztof Piontek, who went from really not playing anywhere in, in Hertha Berlin to now moving back to Italy and Fiorentina and all of a sudden scoring the last two or three games as well. So the competition for places right next to Rabo Lewandowski, who is given, is incredible at the moment. So that's probably out of pressure for the likes of Adam Buxa, uh, Karol and, and, and the others that, I, that I've mentioned. But, uh, you know, to get back to your question, I think people are looking a little bit differently at Major League Soccer because they see now that they can play here, get back to Europe, to, to their country, Poland, and still perform at a good level, at a high level and score goals. Yeah, because he's only 25 years old. The Charlotte Observer, the newspaper here, their headline was that Charlotte FC has found its big time goal scorer. Do you think he will be that player for Charlotte and MLS this year? He can be. You know, again, I'll go back to Adam Books, a center forward. Uh, we know what this league is all about, right? Strength, uh, um, scoring ability, good in the air. You know, Adam can do that. Karol Świderski, uh, his profile is of that, that he, if he does get service, uh, he's capable of doing that, right? I mean, he's your number nine. Uh, uh, so, you know, the, the big question, of course, and, and it's an unknown, it, we'll see is that, you know, it's a brand new team. We have zero idea what Charlotte are capable of. If anything, you know, listening to the manager who pretty much said that, you know, I don't know if he used the word screwed, we're screwed for many, many different ways. Uh, you know, what happened during the pandemic, I guess if you look at Charlotte, I mean, there are many teams before them that came into the league for the first time. But I think they've had probably added pressure of trying to put this team together during the pandemic, right? I mean, if you look at some of the other teams, the question's always been, you know, when a team comes in, it's a question, is it going to be low cost? You know, is it going to be a Cincinnati of the world or maybe Nashville or, or is it going to be Atlanta United or LAFC? You know, what sort of road they pick? As we know, I mean, the owner... Uh, in terms of money, the owner of, of Charlotte is, you know, there are not many like him there, right? The stadium is beautiful, as you've mentioned. Uh, Carolina Panthers play and, 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 and um, 75,000 people. That's great. But it does take time. Uh, and, and I think, I don't know if they set themselves low expectations, but I think we, at the, at the very least, have lower expectations. But that's okay sometimes because maybe a team can overachieve. But... I can feel, you know, what the what the manager was saying and the director of coaching, you know, Zoran, because I can't imagine this was easy during that time. No, well, even before that, I mean, Charlotte was originally supposed to come in last season, right. and that would have been nine, ten months from the date of announcement. You know, when you compare that to an Atlanta, mm -hmm. which had almost three years in building right. it up, then the pandemic prevented a lot of things. You know players getting together sooner. Also, you know, fan events and building up. But mm -hmm. so in the light of all that, to have the 
excitement that's going. And Charlotte's just up the road on I-85 from Atlanta, you know, three and a half hours away. So there's a natural geographical rivalry there with that. But Atlanta also kind of set the bar a little higher for first year teams. But they, you know, their DP picks were excellent. I mean, who knew that Miguel Almoron and, and Joseph Martinez were going to be as good as they were. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what we're hoping here to see if, uh, you know, a Swiderski can, can be that kind of player. And then there's also Jan Sobaczynski, who's a younger player, has featured yeah. with uh, Poland on the younger levels. What can you tell us about him? Yeah, good center back that, uh, you know, I mean, you know, people, you know, so a lot of the people in the league, let's not forget that uh, World Cup in Ukraine, Poland and, and the United States were involved. That's where he featured as well. Uh, it was a plethora of good center backs uh, 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 on that Polish team, you know, uh, um, you know, Kivyori and uh I'm trying to think of the other one. I should remember uh, Płatkowski. Uh, many, many teams. I can tell you. I, I'm not going to name them, but many teams were looking at two or, or three of those center backs, and Jan Sobocinski was included in that. And he wasn't. He wasn't a player that just uh, uh, Charlotte were interested in. There were other teams or another team um, that I spoke with uh, that that was looking at him seriously as well. So uh, you know that that helped a little bit because, as you know, I mean, you know, back then, uh, you know, the manager, you know, top. Ramos was in charge of the U.S. under-20 team, uh, of course. Um, you know, Kurt Anoff was in, in New England, uh, uh, was part of the, the coaching staff, Brian Bliss, uh, you know, my, my former team and the national team as well. Uh, so, I mean, there was th- th- there's always been an awareness on the national team level and with the coaches in general, right? I mean, Tab has coached in MLS as well. Brian Bliss, as I've said, is involved. So a lot of these guys uh, have seen Polish players now. And, and there's no coincidence because, you know, when you talk about uh, Jan, you know, that position is sort of, we all know that Major League Soccer you kind of spend heavy on the attacking players, right? And it's very difficult to find the central players. And, and of course, there's a lot of goals because of that as well, that a little bit of an imbalance of DPs at the high end, I mean, or high end on the pitch, and, and then the defenders. Uh, uh, but yet, uh, I respect the, the the research that was done with Jan Stobocinski because he is a talented player. He was he had a he had a difficult time uh, 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 for a while after this after that World Cup because the club he's been dropped to the lower division. Okay, it's Um So obviously that in itself for a young player, you, as you can imagine, right? I mean, you're at the top of the world a little bit, and I'm speaking for him. I don't know if that's the way he felt, but that's the way I've seen it. And you know, us pundits, uh, not j- obviously here, but I also uh, spoke with people in in Poland when I'm there commentating games. Is is that? You know, it's a bit of a shock. You're going from the World Cup, under-20 World Cup that's played in your country, you know, team in extra class, which is top division in Poland, then you drop off uh, to a lower division. And then, you know, all the rumors and then came in Charlotte. I can understand that maybe there was a time for Jan uh, where, you know, he was a bit down. But in terms of his quality on the ball, it's very good uh, as a center back. You know, I've seen him on numerous occasions uh, with, you know, in particular, you know, with the with the with the national team. So uh, a still very young player, something that's been a bit of a trend, isn't it? Uh, right. In this league where where you give, you know, a lot of young players right now get the opportunity. That wasn't the case even, say, four or five years ago. Uh, you know, I don't even want to talk about my time, but, you, you know, that's just kind of recent now. So. Again, it's very difficult to, to say anything about these players and how they're going to gel with the team because the team is so new. They've had obstacles that I and you have mentioned as well. Um, so, so we just need to la- let Charlotte play a couple of games, uh, get their it's feet wet. It's a very wet. competitive league now. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, you get their feet wet. And, and, and as I said, I, I think at the very least, a team like Charlotte, for most pundits, the benefit of it because I think we all understand how difficult it is to come to this league. The obstacles that we've been talking about that they've gone through so far. And, you know, I think this is going to be, you know, uh, uh, kind of building and, pro- you know, in progress, I think. So uh, hopefully they'll get a good start and sometimes momentum can help you a lot, right? On surface, you look at the team and you say, hmm, I'm not sure just yet if they compete with the, you know, with some of these teams, but, but I, I'm, I firmly believe in momentum. If, if they do well in the first couple of three games, some of the issues that you may have and unknowns 
go away a little bit and it's easier. It becomes quieter. You have the time on the pitch to train and then you can play. So we'll see. Yeah. And when uh, Ramirez had given that comment about we're screwed and stuff, it was, there was just, it was a reaction to, there was a player they were trying to sign a significant player who right after all the deal points were being made, got injured and is out. And so that, that broke the deal apart. So it was, Again, I won't. It's not just that, and I promise you that this has been the story in the last couple of years with Charlotte, even without knowing. But I'll give you an example of a player that uh, I was somewhat involved, you know, with another team, just talking, helping them, and all that. Is is that even during the pandemic, the teams were ready to pull the trigger on some players, but they couldn't see them. I, I know a number of teams where they said, "Look." Under normal circumstance, we'd probably sign that player, but we need to go and see him play in person. You know, yeah, we all have Y Scouts, we have YouTube, we have, you know, everything to look at, but sometimes it's that eye to eye contact. Sometimes it's a conversation to make sure, right? If you're going to spend a significant amount of money, uh, you, it's not even, you know, obviously you want to see him uh, in the stadium how he plays. But a lot goes with the conversation, speaking with the with the coaches, right? Uh, uh, just just learning about the player, the first impression, the little bit of a character that you may find out a little bit more when you're in the presence of the player, say for three or four days when coaches or scouts uh, make their way uh, to their league or to their countries. And and I, I'm I'm telling you, I mean, I know a couple of deals that didn't go through, not because the teams didn't want it, but they just felt that they needed to be there to see the player uh, in person. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was another obstacle where they, I'm sure Charlotte had some targets there where it was just impossible. And then paperwork comes on top of that. And you say to yourself, this is just too much of a risk. Yeah. Still getting started. And with that, but that might be the advantage of having a, an agent slash scout like uh, Zoran Cornetta, you know, making the decisions. Now he's a unique side to a sporting director with that. I want to thank you for your time with all this. And, you know, with the home game, I remember back to 1988 when the Charlotte Hornets made their debut against Cleveland. They lost by 40 points and got a standing ovation. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, again, that was a much different Charlotte. That was our first professional team, uh, you know, top flight there. And um, we'll see how it goes. Charlotte's a much bigger city now, a much more um, – destination city because we have people coming from New York and we're a banking center. So, um, but also, you know, soccer too, there's, there's the fan base is much more knowledgeable now that you have, we have so many generations that grew up with the game and I'm older than you are to where there were 40 kids in Charlotte junior soccer. when I started. Yeah. I think with Charlotte, look, the foundation is there. That's important. I think the fan base will be there. I mean, you know, 75,000 people come into a game. It's, it's big. I mean, you know, not all of them will be coming all the time. Some just want to be part of that unique mm -hmm uniqueness of a, of a first game ever, right? But I think you're going to see big crowds from then on, as I mentioned, the, the, the foundation of, of an incredible owner uh, who, who seems uh, to me that really is going to spend money on this team. This is not just a flyby type of owner, right? Uh, the stadium itself, and as you've mentioned, the city that's very young, vibrant, and all of that, I think the foundation is there. So I think for as long as Charlotte, you know, I mean, the effort is going to be important for as long as player uh, fans understand and see uh, the players uh, are working very, very hard, they'll understand that it's going to take a little bit of time to develop that team. Listen, thank you very much for your time. And the, the only two things I know in Polish are Pivo Prosha, yeah. which is, is a good thing. And the other yeah. is Bart Sowodna, which does not apply right now. Well, actually, apply you yeah. are very beautiful. I love <laughs> watching you play. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you so much for your time with us and, uh, and good luck with everything. Thanks, guys. My pleasure. Have fun. Take care. Bye-bye. Ciao.